Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in the past I've uh, kind of wondered, you know, where will the last sea ice be in the Arctic when we have a blue ocean event? So the blue ocean event, um, that term I invented, I came up with that to describe uh, what would happen in the Arctic or what the Arctic would be like uh, the first uh, time it, it has no sea ice um, at the end of the summer. So September of some year in the near future, no sea ice at all across the Arctic Ocean. And then the question is, well, where would the last vestiges of ice be? You know, many, uh, the mainstream uh, climate science consensus is probably around the coastlines, um, but those are much lower latitude. So I, I said, well, maybe it'll be uh, circling the North Pole instead, you know, right in the middle of the ocean. And uh, an interesting paper just was published and it uh, argues that probably the Lincoln Sea would have the less, last vestiges of sea ice, um, maybe some being formed and circling around the North Pole and then being pulled by the transpolar drift over to the Lincoln Sea. And then uh, based on ocean core drilling um, in the Lincoln Sea, um, there's indications that there was no sea ice there uh, in the early Holocene. Um, now, that wasn't uh, human caused, of course, that would be the, uh, the, the solar insulation in the Arctic was extremely high at that point because of the tilt of the Earth. Um, so it has to do with the Milankovic cycles and the orientation um, the geometry, if you like. Um, so I'm going to talk about that paper. Um, and the figure that you saw, the intro of this is showing the drifts in the Arctic. And I'll, I'll get back to that when I discuss the paper in detail. So the first thing is, okay, so this article just came out um, March 22nd. Uh, let me turn the camera. Okay, so this article came out March 22nd. So sea ice may soon disappear from the Arctic during the summer months, and it has happened before. So this is uh, interesting, they say it has happened before and not as long back as we think. So let's have a look at what the evidence and so on. So this is an icebreaker Odin in the sea ice north of Greenland. Now we were gonna call our, my, my youngest son wanted to call my new dog, um, Odin, but you know, my, my wife and I and other siblings were saying, uh, you know, my other other kids were saying, no, no, like, they like the name Newton, which I came up with as in Sir Isaac Newton. So we went with Newton. My youngest son to this day still calls um, the dog Odin. So he's a bit of a confused dog, but I think he knows his name. So the last ice area north of Greenland and Canada is the last sanctuary of, it's called the Last Ice Area, or LIA for short. That's what they use in this paper. It's, it's the last sanctuary of all year sea ice in this time of rising temperatures caused by climate change. A new study now suggests that this may soon be over. So uh, researchers from Aarhus University, Stockholm University, and the United States Geological Survey, they looked at ocean core samples from the previously inaccessible region north of Greenland. So they connected these sediment samples in the seabed, from the seabed in the Lincoln Sea, um, and they showed that the sea ice in this area melted away during the summer months around 10,000 years ago. They concluded that summer sea ice melted at a time when temperatures were at a level that we were rapidly approaching again today. Climate models have suggested that summer sea ice in this region will melt in the coming decades, but it's uncertain if that would be 20, 30, 40 years or more. But what they've shown is that temperatures only have to increase a little bit before the ice will melt out. So data from the early Holocene was used to predict when the sea ice will melt today. Um, during the early Holocene, summer temperatures in the Arctic were higher slightly higher than today, again, because of the tilt of the earth. It was because of natural climate variability as opposed to the anthropogenic warming, but it was still a good, uh, a good 
way to test or to try to learn more about the fate of this region in the intermediate, in the immediate future. Um, so what they did is um, they they found that um, you know when, of course when the sea ice in the Lincoln Sea begins to melt during the summer months, it can have major consequences for the climate because you know you're replacing the white ice with the dark sea. The dark sea absorb ten, absorbs ten times as much solar energy as the white reflective ice. So you know this is the Arctic amplification effect. Um, the sea ice is also a base for many ecosystems. The algae that are in within the sea ice are food for fish, fish are food for birds, etc. So the entire marine ecosystem will be affected when the sea ice disappears. Um, so they say this is good and bad news for the climate. The bad news is happening very soon. The good news is that when the trend, if the trend is reversed, it's a reversible trend. So it's not, um, you know, if you do something to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, lower greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, then the ice will return. It's not, um, it's not irreversible. Okay, so, so this paper is a wake up call. Um, they're saying so, so they, uh, it's open source. So I had a look at it. But before I do that, let's just, uh, I went to Google Earth, and I searched for Lincoln Sea. And here you go, it brings you right here to the Lincoln Sea. So here we go. This is uh, Canada's Ellesmere Island. And this is the northern part of Greenland. And here's where we have the Lincoln Sea. Okay, North Pole up here. Okay, um, and you can read a little bit about the Lincoln Sea uh, by clicking the link. So here's the Lincoln Sea. Um, it stretches from Cape Columbia, Canada, to Cape Morris Jessup, Greenland. So from here to here, it's all in this area, the Lincoln Sea. You can see the Nares Strait here. The ice bridges would form up here. That would prevent ice from drifting down. Now they break, so the ice drifts down. But this is where a lot of the thick ice is in the Arctic. Um, okay, so it's covered with sea ice throughout the year. At the moment, the thickest sea ice, it's the thickest sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. can be up to 15 meters thick. And that's mostly because of ridging. You know, it's ice... Um, pushed on top of other ice and pushed on top of other ice. So it can be very thick in that region. Water depths, 100 meters to 300 meters. So that's about 330 feet to 990 feet, not 80 feet. And then, uh, okay, so basically um, the ocean circulation, um, yeah, I'm not going to go into more details here about the currents, the sea ice uh, dispute between Canada and Denmark, right? There's an island um, that's in that region that's disputed and so on. But anyway, I just, this is where it is, basically. Okay, the Lincoln Sea. Um, so we'll look at this paper, but I think we'll, before then... Um, yeah, so I'm going to go over this paper in detail. It just came out, um, and we'll see what it says. But before then, um, I want to show you some other things first. So, sympagic ecology um, is a term used in the paper. Um, it's just water exists mostly as solid ice, so it's the algae, et cetera, on the underneath of the ice, et cetera, et cetera. They also use the term pelagic. The pelagic is... Um, is, is near the surface. It's the water column of the open ocean. It's, 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 it's the pelagic zone. It's neither close to the bottom nor near shore. Okay, it's closer to the surface. And then of course, the there's a term, um, how do they know the t temperatures and how do they know there was no ice there for a while at the in the early Holocene? They look at this um, chemical this molecule, brassy castorol, it's a 28 carbon sterol. It's synthesized by several unicellular algae. So it's a type of phytoplankton and some terrestrial plants as well. Okay, so it's indicative. If you measure this stuff in the sediment core, then you know that this algae was around at that particular time. And if the algae was around, you can say that there's 
there was sea ice above the um, in that region. Okay, so that comes in to, in, in the paper. Um, so let's have a look at what the Arctic is doing quickly right now. So this is the Arctic sea ice, um, and this is uh, now basically March twenty second. So normally it peaks about mid March, but it peaked about um, this is March. Uh, 14.616, It looks like it peaked on March 6 at 14.618 million square kilometers. So it's peaking earlier and this is the previous uh, record. This is 2012 record minimum of sea ice. This is a trajectory. So we're lower than that. You know, the question is, is, you know, is this going to be another year where we're super low? You know, when, will we reach the, um, you know, 1 million square kilometers and say, you know, it's, oh, it's blue ocean event sort of thing. Okay, so who, who knows? There's lots of fluctuation year to year. Okay, also, I should show you the Antarctic. And this is the Antarctic. Uh, this is where we are right now. This is the previous record minimum right here in 2022. Okay, well below the uh, the averages, the medium. And, uh, you know, we're tracking that fairly closely as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. And uh, this is Arctic, uh, the National Snow and Ice Data Center, Arctic Sea Ice News and Analysis. So you can get lots of um, stuff. A report just came out, um, I guess, last week. Arctic sea ice maximum at fifth lowest on satellite record, you know, and it talks about the details of the the maximum. And this is the 10 lowest maximum Arctic sea ice extents. Um, and uh, so we, you know, we, we were, this is 2021 here, um, 1979 to present. So you can see what the previous uh, lowest maximums were and so on okay um the you know arctic sea ice minimum extent here's how it's trending per decade it's down 12.6 percent per decade in september okay is the trend and uh they you know we're losing there's less and less and less older ice, where the ice zero to one years old occupies most of the Arctic now. Okay, lots of stuff there. Um, this is another website, the Great White Con, putting the Arctic sea ice record straight with various graphs of Arctic sea ice extent, area, compaction, lots of, in, you know, the PO mass on Arctic, uh, on the volume of the Arctic it's all plotted on a day-to-day -day basis. The, you know how the so the volume is been dropping rapidly. This is September volume is the red. Um, this is April volume, and then the trend. Okay, so the trends are all down, of course, right? Um, now it's interesting because I tried to find the Arctic sea ice graphs website and site not found. So it looks like it's been nixed, unfortunately. I mean, I know it takes a lot of work to keep up these sites. It was one of the best go-to sites on the Arctic, so I don't see it. So I have to go to uh, this guy, uh, Zach Labe, um, who has uh, excellent um, plots. So let's have a look at some of his plots. Uh, hang on just a sec. Yeah, okay, before I look at his stuff, um, the paper that I'm talking about um, is going to be, it was the data, These the, the sediment cores were taken in 2019 on this uh, Rider 2019 research expedition. They used this Swedish icebreaker Odin. They went to the uh, Northwest Greenland um, and they took the sediment cores. They went up here and they took the sediment cores, which were then analyzed and were just published in the paper. So there's some interesting human stories of, of their expedition and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's uh, 
some other, uh, this is Google Images. This is the expedition, the Rider 2019 expedition. And you can see different uh, photographs, different images of the people on the expedition and where they were and the details and so on. So they collected a lot. They did a lot of science on that expedition. Um, one of the images, uh, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, if you want to see a video, it's an hour long video um, on the, that was done um, when they all returned. It was on mapping on the top of the world, the Rider 29 expedition. So there'll be details, there should be details in there on the Marine Corps sediments and how they went about doing it, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they were able to do it because of the lack of sea ice, the sea ice retreating in that region. So if you want to find out more about how the data was collected, um, that's a great video. Okay, so let's go back to the the uh, paper, if I can find it. Okay, so there, 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 there. Okay, so this is the article that, uh, okay, so let's have a look at this. So seasonal sea ice in the Arctic's last ice area during the early Holocene. So according to climate models, the Lincoln Sea, which borders Northern Greenland and Canada, will be the final stronghold of perennial Arctic sea ice in a warming climate. So perennial ice being there year round. Think of plants, perennials and annuals. Perennials uh, live from year to year, right? The roots at least, uh, you know, can, can regenerate come the spring. Winter doesn't kill them, they're perennials. You don't have to plant them every year like annuals. Um, Recent observations of prolonged periods of open water in the Lincoln Sea raise concerns regarding its long-term stability. Modeling su studies suggest a transition from perennial to seasonal sea ice during the early Holocene, a period of elevated global temperatures about 10,000 years ago. Okay, so the, if the last remaining ice in the Arctic is in the Lincoln Sea, then what they're doing is they have modeling studies that show that the Lincoln Sea was perennial, but it went to seasonal sea ice during the early Holocene, which would indicate that there was no sea ice in the entire Arctic if that was the last region. Although I would argue there still could have been some sea ice um, circling the uh, pole. Um, so here, so they looked at marine proxy evidence uh, for the disappearance of perennial sea ice in the southern Lincoln Sea during the early Holocene. And that suggested a widespread transition to seasonal sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. So complete loss of ice um, in the, at the end, by the end of the summer. Seasonal sea ice conditions were tightly coupled to regional atmospheric temperatures. In light of anthropogenic warming and Arctic amplification, our results suggest that we're facing an imminent transition to seasonal sea ice in the southern Lincoln Sea, even if the global temperature rise is kept below a threshold of two Celsius compared to pre-industrial. And again, they talk about pre-industrial being the 1850 to 1900. That's commonly done now, whereas it was really this, you know, 1750. Okay, so basically what this saying is that there, we're, we're looking for, a, we're heading to an imminent transition to a blue ocean event. That's what this is basically saying. Okay, so um, let's have a look at some, a little bit here in the intro. So the observed demise of Arctic sea ice in recent decades has had major impact on the climate, the ecosystem, the livelihood and cultural heritage of indigenous peoples and global geopolitical interests. As anthropogenic warming continues, climate models suggest that Arctic multi-year ice will survive the longest along the northern coastline of the Canadian Arctic Archipelago and Greenland. Today, this region, also known as the Last Ice Area, hereafter referred to as LIA, Last Ice Area, it hosts the thickest and oldest sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. It's due to the cold temperatures and the main Arctic Ocean surface circulation dominated by the Beaufort Gyre and the Transpolar Drift, transporting sea ice towards the last ice area. 
As a result, the last ice area is perennially covered. It's covered year round by a mixture of locally formed and transported first year ice and multi-year ice with ages greater than five years. Okay, um, so let's have a look at the figures here. Okay, and they say basically the, the Swedish icebreaker went on this Ryder 29, 2019 expedition to map and retrieve marine core sediment cores from the uncharted fjord and southeastern Lincoln Sea area. And they looked at these cores um, and analyzed them to see, uh, because they would tell us something about the uh, ice above. Okay, so this is the uh, this is a good image here, which I showed you in the intro. So, so this is the the little square here, the little rectangle here is this area here. This is where they did the cores, just offshore. This whole area is the uh, the Lincoln Sea here, in this area, and this is the uh, LIA. This is the last ice area. So you know the ice is. Look at the, we've got the Beaufort Gyre spinning this way pushing ice into this region. We've got the transpolar drift, which brings ice across the Arctic, and it gets jammed up in this region, right? Because the narrow strait, the ice bridge is failing now. A lot, there is ice exported out here, but it takes time and not much can be exported. So the ice is piling up. It's the thickest in this region. Okay, so this is the annual sea ice concentration trends is the colors from 1979 to 2018, you can see that there's not much trend here, right? Because this is where the ice has been vanishing in these regions, in these regions, faster than any other regions, okay? So this is, this is uh, the, the, the key uh, geography of the region and the way the currents are going, the reason why the last ice area is expected to be here, in particular, the Lincoln Sea here, okay? So far, so far, so good. So, Basically, the, the results here, the Holocene sea ice dynamics. So they, they've reconstructed the, the sea ice dynamics of the Lincoln Sea, looking at what's called sympagic IP25 and pelagic. This is the brassio, brassy castorol, which I talked about, biomarkers. So these are chemicals that are in the algae. They've also looked at the amount of total organic carbon in the region. And what they say is that changes in the relative concentration of these biomarker groups are indicative of changes in ice al algal versus open water habitat. So there has to be ice for the algae to be there. If the ice leaves the region, then there's no algae and you don't see these biomarkers in, in the sediments. So the sediments give you a are a proxy for telling you there was ice above or no ice above. In surface sediments underlying the pack ice area of the central Arctic, the, the biomarker concentrations are low and absent because the primary productivity is restricted by the availability of nutrients and photosynthetically active radiation. Okay, so in other words, it, basically the biomarker concentrations are highest in surface sediments in regions of seasonal sea ice. So if the ice is gone in the summer, the light can penetrate through the water column. You can get the algae growing. You see the biomarkers, um, they're absent. You don't see these biomarkers in ice-free regions because you don't get the algae growth. Okay, that's, that's how it is. I may have said that backwards at some point. Okay, so here's the data. So these are the biomarkers. This is the age years, calendar years before present. And these are the sediments in the cores. These are the chemicals, these sterols in, in the cores. Well, what do you see? Boop, big jump here. Big jump here means that there's basically light penetrating down and the algae can form so these chemicals are then trapped in the marine sediments, which are laid down over time. Here and here and here and here and here and here, right? So basically what it's saying, this goes from about, this is uh, about 11,200 years ago to about 9,700 years ago, okay? In these, in these time periods, 
there was basically lit very little or no ice in this part of the Lincoln Sea. Now, if this is the area where the last ice would remain, um, <coughs> the Arctic Ocean, the, the, the uh, inference is that the Arctic Ocean was ice free in the summers, or at least part of the summer to allow the algae to grow, to allow these chemicals to appear and then be deposited in the sediment. Um, and this, this, this is uh, total organic con, uh, con, total organic carbon weight percentage, you know, also jumped up here. And the June, July, August temperature was also high here because of the, um, the geometry, the, the Milankovic cycle uh, situation. Okay, so this is very significant data. Um, these are mean sea ice concentrations and um, so on. Some other, uh, I don't, the, the main thing I've, I've shown you already. Let's see. So, <coughs> excuse me. This is uh, the southern Lincoln Sea area. This is where the, the two ice cores were made on the Ryder 2019 expedition ice cores. The two mar uh, marine sediment cores were made here. And um, this is showing the movement of the glaciers. Um, great, the, the Greenland ice sheet velocity of the glaciers, the Peterman, the Ryder glacier, that's the Ryder expedition. Um, another glacier, so uh, fastest movement is the red. So as you get closer to the sea, the glaciers are moving faster. It's the Agassiz ice cap here. Okay, so this is uh, showing you, um, this is where the PO mass sea ice concentrations are done to get the volumes, etc. Okay, um, yeah, so, so that's basically the gist of the, the article and there's supplemental stuff. Okay, so what the article is saying is that um, these are the areas of the thickest sea ice. So this is the last ice area. The last ice in the Arctic, when the Arctic loses all its sea ice, the, this is where the last area is expected to have ice. And then this goes and you have completely ice free. This area here too, because of the Beaufort gyre and the transpolar drift pushing the ice there. So what they're saying is that no ice was in these regions for this period of time, <coughs> right? for this period of time between here and here. So that's about 11,200 years ago to about 9,700 years ago. No ice was in that region. So no ice was in the Arctic. So Arctic sea ice was seasonal. It was only there in the winter. Okay, and this is where we're, we're heading right now. So, uh, but there is some interesting stuff here in the paper uh, towards the end here. Okay, so let me just uh, talk about this. Uh, maybe I should, I don't want to read the whole thing, but there is some important stuff over here. Okay, so here, here it is. So, uh, da -da -da -da. So the reestablishment of a perennial ice cover in the Atlantic sector of the Arctic Ocean, northernmost Greenland Sea, closely follows that of the Southern Lincoln Sea around 9,700 years before present. Okay. Um, so the transition from seasonal sea ice occurred in the early Holocene. And that's equivalent to a regime shift in large parts of the Arctic Ocean. Okay, since if that's the last sea ice remaining, then if there's no sea ice there in the Lincoln Sea, then you got the ice-free Arctic Ocean. But then they say that there's, uh, this is interesting, there's some contrasting sedimentary and micropaleontological -pale evidence that exists from the central Arctic Ocean. So one paper suggests that perennial sea ice persisted over the western and central Lomonosov Ridge during the early Holocene. Um, 
The, another, some other papers suggest an interval of reduced sea ice in the central Arctic Ocean from about 11.6 to 10,000 years ago, 11,600 years ago to 10,000 years ago. But due to low sedimentation rates in the central Arctic Ocean, the early Holocene is typically only represented by two to three data points. So there's not data, like the, there's not much sediment. There's ocean current, so the sediment doesn't settle there. Um, so it, that might not resolve the sea ice variability. It says, if sea ice persisted in the central Arctic Ocean during the early Holocene, so that's no sea ice in the Lincoln Sea, maybe sea ice persisting in the central Arctic Ocean, right? Because it's right at 90 degrees north. It's the coldest there. It's, uh, you know, the Lincoln Sea is at much lower latitude. It says seasonal ice in the southern Lincoln Sea was likely restricted to the near coastal areas associated with the thinner, more mobile sea ice cover and the breakdown of the land fast sea ice cover. So in this scenario, in other words, a thin ice pack may have survived in the central Lincoln Sea and parts of the central Arctic Ocean, okay? So my theory that the last uh, remnants of ice um, would be, you know, right at the North Pole, circling the North Pole, is still alive, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, I speculated it a while ago, but it looks like it's still possible. We just don't have much data in the, in the central... Um, in the central Arctic because the sediment doesn't settle, you know, it's, it drifts elsewhere. Okay, and uh, so what else does it say here? Yeah, anyway, uh, you, you know, read this and maybe you have your own view on this because I thought, okay, well, if these currents are strong, are still fairly strong, you know, why would, if there's, if there is sea ice near, near the, near the North Pole here, if that's the last sea ice and, and it's pretty much gone everywhere else, well, it's not going to stay there, is it? Like it'll be pushed by the transpolar drift, you know, and this is where it would be. So, right. So I don't know. I mean, it's possible that it's forming and stays here because these, Bo the Beaufort gyre and transpolar drifts could, could actually change. Uh, and be much different, you know, when there's no sea ice around. It could be one of these uh, things where it needs the sea ice to have these these strong uh, features, which we see now. So I don't know. I mean, the jury is still out. But unfortunately, you, you know, if you do coring, I wonder if they've done any coring right at the North Pole, like how deep the water is. I mean, I think they need to do some coring right at the very North Pole and see what they can find. Maybe that'll throw some light on whether there was sea ice there uh, when there was no sea ice in the, in the Lincoln Sea region. So the jury's still out on this. This is, uh, you know, interesting questions I have to think about more. Anyway, I hope I haven't, uh, massacred this paper and this, this, uh, topic. Oh, I did want to show you some stuff from, um, uh, da, 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 da. I wanted to show you from stuff from Zach Laib. Just quickly, right? Loads of loads of good stuff. Arctic sea ice extent, you know, over time and the trend lines and the Arctic warming, you know, from one decade, 83 to 92, and then the next decade, then the most recent decade. I mean, look at these areas. The warming is huge because this is the areas that have lost most of the sea ice. Sea ice is thinning. Yeah, I mean, the thickest ice is right up here last ice area, according to the paper, right? Arctic amplification, you know, air temperature, huge, sea ice extent down, sea surface temperature up, and Arctic climate, air temperature, sea ice extent, right? It's all up to date. The uh, temperature anomalies, uh, degrees Celsius, and the rank by month, Okay, so you can see the, the numbers here. These are the warmest. So May, June, July, August, September, October. Warmest back, uh, and that probably was back at the um, last uh, strong El Nino. I don't know. And this is a scale going back even further. So this is 79 to 2021. 
which is where the satellite coverage began in the Arctic. So it starts at 79. This is going back even further. You know, look at the temperatures here. Massive increases, you know, so the Arctic, you know, most of the warming is in the winter, right? So September, this is the fall, this is the spring, and then the summer, right? So the warming is, is uh, you know, most of the warming, you can see it so clearly on this, this uh, image, changes in Arctic sea ice, extent in volume, loss of land ice, Antarctica and Greenland, reconstructed sea ice since 1850, um, Temperature anomaly for each year. Uh, okay, this is 2022. Uh, 1906, five, this is 1903 to 2022. Right, you can see how the warming is just, like look at this warming, it's just red. Recent Arctic amplification from 79 to 2022, you know, just like ugly looking red blotches. September sea ice concentration over the last hundred years, you know, we're talking about, this is the region here, the Lincoln Sea that we've been talking about in this paper. Uh, sea ice extent, sea ice anomalies, right? There's just loads and loads of data. I mean, it's the best place to get data. Extent records by month and sea ice thickness in February from year to year. Okay, so right here, some of the, you know, that'll probably be where the last ice is, but I still think it, there might be some floating around the pole. I don't know. Right, low, and then there's a lot, of, there's there's the papers, uh, access to his papers. So great site. So anyway, um, this is the paper again. You know, this is the article that I read. If you want the basics, if you want to go and look at where the Google, use Google Earth to get the area. And this is an open source uh, paper. So you can just go and download it and have a look at yourself and skim it or read it. And hopefully it makes uh, more sense because of my video. Or maybe you have to go to this paper and read it yourself because you have no idea what I just said in this video. Anyway, uh, please consider uh, going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.